in our today's video we are going to look into github action pipeline for aws and we will be leveraging terraform to deploy our resources now let's understand the high level architecture first we will be having one custom ui where user will be putting some inputs and they will be clicking on submit button the ui will trigger one github actions pipeline using the api then the git action pipeline will execute some steps including a terraform job terraform will take those values which user has given as inputs and it will try to deploy an aws s3 bucket with static website hosting enabled then the pipeline will have another job to upload our html files for that particular website once that is done we can directly access the website and optionally we can also have one dns record to access that website so without wasting any more time let's have a demo first then we will try to understand the coding part in order to have our demonstration this is my devops youtube repository which is publicly accessible let's click on this profile picture at the top right corner and we need to get one personal access token so let's click on this settings once you are into this settings page scroll down at the bottom and let's find this option called developer settings once you are into developer settings click on personal access token or pat and we will go with fine grained tokens token classics has been there for a quite good period of time let's go with this this is now in preview mode let's click on generate new token this is required basically because we need to trigger the pipeline from a custom ui which we updated and resource owner name as this repository is belonging to das learning org i need to change the owner to das learning org expiry time you can define that's 30 days fine with me any name so maybe maybe git episode 2 something like that and on which repositories you want to give access to this token so let's go with only selected repositories the third option now click on this drop down and let's find out as this is a public one the color is changing but let's take devops youtube for now now we need to give fine grain access to this particular token so i need to expand this repository permissions click on this arrow button and actions click on as you see this is having no access let's click on this drop down as we want to execute this the read only will not work we need to go with read and write along with that we do not need any other permission we'll see one permission will be given by default like metadata so let it be there as it is and here is the summary actions it can read and write the metadata it can read only let's click on generate token let's copy this value for now and put it into a notepad this is your github token which we will use with our custom ui this one and we need to do one more thing we need to have a credential so i have launched my im user window i'll create a new user i'll click on this create new user from aws console maybe git episode 2 anything like that i do not need management console access that means the gui it will be only for programmatic access that is fine click on next here are three options to provide permissions i will go with attach policies directly and i'll search for s3 and i'll give s3 full access for now because i want to create a bucket and upload something but you may provide some more granular access but this is fine with me let's click on next and let's click on create user now the user is created git episode 2 let's go into that close this prompt i need to go into security credentials and as of now there is no access key i'll click on create access key any kind of option you may choose but i will go with third party services or maybe application running outside aws it will give some alternative recommendation but that is fine with me let's click on next any value maybe any any name you can provide click on create access key and here are two values i can click on the small copy buttons over here let's also paste that into notepad and here is your secret value copy that also like username and password do not share this with anyone click on done and it is giving me an option that i can download the csv file or anything which holds the credential but that is fine with me click on continue now my key is ready my pad token is ready i need to go into the 
repository or github repository where I want to run my actions. For that I need to set some securities or credentials basically. So I'll click on this settings button over here. I'll look for secrets and variables this option. Then I'll click on actions. So I want to set secrets for actions. So I'll go with repository secrets only for this repository. Click on this green one new repository secret. Now what will be your secret ID or your variable name that we can find from the pipeline definition. So I have used some variable called AWS TF ID. This is the application ID. I need to get this value, paste it and add secret. We can only edit it, but we'll be not able to view this. It can be used by our actions or pipeline. Another secret I need that will be AWS TF key. This is my variable name secret. Copy the entire value, paste it here add secret. So this is kind of my user ID and user password. This is already set. Obviously, I'll explain the code in detail. That's not a problem. So I have created one UI using HTML and JavaScript. Let me show you that this is the UI and it is using one JavaScript behind the scene, which basically does the API call. Here I need to put few details. The personal access token for GitHub, which we have generated. I'll update that the organization name. So what is my organization name in that case? So this is Das Learning Org. It can be anything for you. Then your repository name. These are the two parameters I need. This is my organization or GitHub owner. Then this is my repo name. Then I need the pipeline ID. The pipeline ID will be my file name or the YAML file, which I have already put in GitHub slash workflows. You can check my previous video. I'll give a link in the description and you'll come to know how to use workflows or how to create that. Basically, you have to create a YAML file and put it into .github slash workflows directory. That is it. I've already done that and I need to update the pad. Let me take the pad value. I'll open this main.js. I'll paste the pad. I'll save this file. I will reload my UI or HTML UI and Let's see. Oh, before that, let me show you what my website will be or the static website, which I'm planning to deploy on a new bucket. So this is one resume I have created using HTML. This is one simple one. It can be any web application or static website also that can be hosted in AWS S3. So I'll basically push this one and let me think of a bucket name, which will go with my domain. So maybe CV dot daslearning.in that means cv.daslearning.in and in which region I want to create the bucket. So maybe Singapore doesn't matter. Your UI can be custom as per your client's requirement basically. So let it be Singapore and let's click on submit button now. And your request to create a bucket has been queued. This is one pop up from my UI. Click on OK. Let's go to my repository and let's click on actions and let's see if it is triggered. As we see, one new trigger has been generated. Let's click on this. This will take a while and let's understand what are the steps involved. Now it is executing some Terraform code and it is trying to upload my payload, which I've given. That is my CV. Now everything is done in my Terraform output. I have basically given the website endpoint, which will be printing on my screen. As we see, let's copy this value. And we'll see one bucket will be created in my AWS. Let's refresh that. Here is my cv.daslearning.in. That's cool. It's in Singapore region, which we have selected from the UI. That is also cool. Uh, let me, I've already copied the URL from my GitHub output. Let's hit enter. And here we go. This is my CV. Now it is publicly available. How cool is that? And this UI can be used by any non-technical people if you design that properly. Okay, let us do one more thing. I'll add a DNS record in order to map that with my domain. I'll go to my DNS records. I'll add a new record for static web hosting in S3. I need to take CNAME record and it can be root also. But as I am planning to include cv.daslearning.in, so I am going with CV only. Then I need to paste the URL value, which we have got from our Terraform job. Let's close this access token window now. 
and if we go here here is our terraform output okay let's propagate that proxy is auto everything is fine i'll just give a comment here so any comment this is optional and let's click on save it will take a while to propagate over the internet now it is added instead of going into this s3 website which is given by amazon now let's try if we can access cv so this is my domain daslearning.in and i've created the subdomain cv.daslearning.in and let's see here we go now my cv is available over the internet using my custom domain this is how we can even map custom domain with s3 website hosting and one good thing now i have my connection secured with https connection now that is enough for the demonstration let's now little bit understand on the coding part let's start with the trigger part so in trigger basically what we can use we can use a post to trigger one github action pipeline and some header i am setting it what will be my data type then authorization it should be brr space your pet token or the personal access token for your github user which we have created then i am setting up which api version i am gonna use i'll put a documentation link also then the url the url looks something like api.github.com slash repos then your owner name or our organization name then your repository name then actions workflows then your pipeline id or the yaml file then dispatches this is your url along with that we can also pass some data so data will be ref or reference whatever your branch you need to trigger then another parameter is inputs in inputs it's basically one json and here you can provide your variables so i'll show you whatever variables i've defined in the pipeline i can pass on values for those like bucket and region which we have captured directly from the form which we have used in our custom ui like bucket name and the region so that is basically it so my javascript is written accordingly it takes all the inputs from the form and it does one api call to the same url which we have discussed now once that is done my pipeline gets executed now let's understand how the pipeline structure is the name of the pipeline can be anything just to have a visual look then on this particular things decides your trigger parameters then i'm saying workflow dispatch workflow dispatch is basically manual trigger and whenever i define this i can also define what will be my inputs or variables which can be set by the user directly then in inputs i have two parameters are basically two variables bucket and region any description for that particular variable if it is required or not required means it is a mandatory value and if it is false that means it is not required it is an optional value along with that you can also set some default values which is not required in our case that is why i have commented it out then i am defining some jobs i have defined only one job this is the job id aws s3 job the name can be anything then this is one name which will be shown in the pipeline then where it runs i have selected ubuntu latest you can take other options also under this job aws s3 job i can run some different steps or tasks first task is my git checkout whenever this pipeline gets executed and comes to this step it will try to check out or get all the code from my entire github repository and wherever i am triggering it from using the ref branch over here that will try to get the code from that particular branch using this step then in earlier ubuntu machines like 20 lts or anything that used to come with terraform pre-installed but now they have removed terraform and it is not coming as pre-installed we have to install using a separate task which is publicly available we just need to define which terraform version we need you can even write latest over here instead of giving a version but i've given 1.7.0 it will basically install that particular terraform on our github runner wherever this job will be running then the next task is create a bucket using terraform and here we are accessing those secrets that means aws secret id and key which we have set as secret variable under the github repository settings 
and that is getting stored as environment variables aws access key id and aws secret access key if you set these two particular variables using proper id and key you can run any terraform job with aws or any cli for aws automation you do not need to pass your credentials in other way it is more secure then i am changing my directory in the commands basically these are the commands which is running i am changing my directory to github devops this is my github devops then episode 2 aws this is episode 2 aws then tf and here is my tf now let's take a look aws s3 it is doing nothing but creating one bucket static website hosting it is taking two variables the name of the bucket and the region of the bucket if we check in the variable section that are the two variables and we have not defined any default value neither any tf vars file so we need to provide that value in order to create the bucket in a particular region so in terraform if i define tf underscore var underscore that particular variable name and if we put some value which i'm getting from the input variable which i have defined over here the value will be set for that particular terraform variable similar goes for the name also then i'm initiating terraform init terraform plan and terraform apply so this will create the bucket and it will set everything like what will be my default html file for my website any error file or anything it will apply some policies and so on you can take a look i'll give a link in the description once the bucket is created i need to upload my html code in order to have the static website ready now i'm changing my directory for this task to episode 2 aws this one then i'm creating one python virtual environment i'm activating the virtual environment then i'm firing pip install aws cli basically i need the cli to upload those code you can use any other method also and as i'm using virtual environment i need to basically set the access id and key again so i'm running export command and getting the secret value from the repository secrets then i'm firing aws s3 sync this is my directory wherever my html base cv is written then i'm uploading that to a s3 bucket and the value will be input dot bucket whatever user has provided and this will be dynamic and it can be anything for each run then i'm simply uploading my terraform state file for future reference or modifications and i'm uploading to another predefined bucket which is already created in order to hold the terraform state file this is completely optional but this is useful then i am deactivating the virtual environment and that is it let's also see whether my terraform state file has been uploaded or not so that will be under das learning tf let's go into that and here is my run id of github job or github run that is ending with 804 that is good it will be saved under youtube git devops and 804 for each run it will be creating unique directory using this particular variable predefined variable from github github run id then simply terraform.tf state let's go into that and here is our tf state we can download anytime and we can play around with this and that is it for this video basically and i know this is not exactly ci cd as if we change anything on our application which is this cv it will not get pushed or it will not be deployed at that time obviously we can modify this pipeline or we can create another pipeline for ci cd job whenever there is any change on our application or web application that can be pushed to that particular bucket well that's a topic for another episode thanks for watching catch you up later